Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be talking about a relatively large pattern change that's coming to the United States as we head into January of 2024 and this is going to change a lot of things including with El Nino we're going to see a much more active weather pattern over the upcoming weeks that's going to lead to some large cool downs and perhaps even some arctic blasts in the horizon. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin first with what's happening across the United States today, which is a little bit unrelated to what we'll be talking about later in this forecast, but we do actually currently have an ongoing low pressure system and a pretty large storm over in the Midwest and the Central Plains. And you'll notice that over here in Missouri, that is the center of this low pressure system. And this has been bringing that blizzard to parts of the Central and Northern Plains over the past couple of days. That is now winding down. But what is to come with this is it's actually going to move down to the South and East going toward Georgia and South Carolina. Carolina. And what's interesting about this low pressure system is that it's actually going to be bringing some snowfall to areas like northern Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, areas that just don't see snow that often are actually going to be seeing snow over the next few days. And we might even see some snow leak into parts of north Texas going into tomorrow morning. So again, this is a very interesting low pressure system, a very defined dry slot as well as going into this, which has actually weakened the low pressure system overall. It's not producing as heavy of rain and snow as it once was, but it's going to bring some snow to areas that, again, just don't see snow that often, especially in December. Another key critical point of this storm as well is that it's bringing a lot of cold air infection, which is keeping areas around this low pressure system colder than normal. And as this drifts to the east, we're going to continue to see that co cool down go toward areas in the east coast. Notice there's a lot of moisture as well on the eastern side of this trough stretching from the Gulf of Mexico back into areas like the northeast. A lot of this is cloud cover. There is a little bit of rain associated associated with this back in the northeast but it's nothing major by any means as of right now now behind this low pressure system we actually have another area of activity on the west coast of the united states some showers ongoing in those areas some snow in the higher elevations but again nothing major here at this point other than some rain falling as well as high winds on the west coast of the united states all right let's talk more about what's upcoming here across the united states and the big pattern change that's going to be coming as we go into january and a look at that we're going to start with the jet stream this gives us an idea of the weather patterns that are happening across the United States. And again, right now we do have that low pressure system that's centered over Missouri. Now, again, this is what we're looking at in the upper levels, so it's a little bit different than the surface, but overall it's pretty much the same thing. We have this low pressure system that's disconnected from the polar jet stream, and it's actually currently a closed low pressure system. What that means is that the low pressure system is, again, not really attached to the jet stream very well. We have these closed contours here in the middle. That's going to be representing a closed low, and what these usually do is that they move a lot slower. That usually produces more rain and snow over a longer period of time and that's what we saw in the central and northern plains over the past couple of days with the blizzard and as well as several inches of snow in some areas even saw feet of snow out of the system now as we go into thursday into friday things are going to change a little bit so this low pressure system will move toward the east coast strong jet stream across the southeast united states and this will actually create some high wind speeds also colder air on the back side of this low pressure system will usher into the areas in the southeast by the weekend by early next week things become a little bit less active this is by sunday of this weekend actually so again notice a low pressure system back over in the midwest this is completely different from the one that we have right now but this might bring a little clipper system out of canada maybe a little bit of snow to parts of the midwest but i'll be honest with you if we see any snow in the midwest it's going to be very minimal overall maybe some flurries to an inch of snow at best across the great lakes in the midwest now as we go into next week that's when things change a lot because as we go further into winter we're obviously observing an el nino winter Winter, which means the southern tier of the United States will overall be more active when it comes to the rainfall as well as colder weather. And what we're going to be seeing over the next several weeks is multiple low pressure systems that are coming out of the Pacific Ocean, going through areas in Southern California, through New Mexico and Arizona, through Texas. And this is what's going to become very common is low pressure systems going through the southern tier of the United States, bringing rainfall, some snow, even potentially to areas in the Central Plains, the Ohio Valley, maybe even in the Southern Plains. Overall, this will question. continue to lead into the above average average precipitation and the below average temperatures that are in the forecast across the southern tier of the United States as we go into January and as well as into February. This is by the time we get closer to Wednesday and to Thursday and again you'll notice this a much clearer picture here that again multiple low pressure systems will be riding here across areas in the southern tier of the United States. Meanwhile areas in the northern plains the midwest and the northeast are probably going to be overall pretty quiet though we'll probably at least see a few storms this winter. I don't think again it's going to be as active as what we've seen in the past few winters 
winters where we had a La Nina winter. And as I mentioned previously, a La Nina winter is completely different from an El Nino winter when it comes to just where the storms are originating and also where they're actually heading toward across the United States. All right, let's talk more about the future radar over the next several days and go over what's going to be really active across the United States for the next week or two. And this is what we're looking at as of right now. So again, we have a little bit of snow right now centered across Missouri and Illinois. We're going to talk about this more in detail here in just a moment. And also over on the East Coast, we have some showers ongoing, some heavy rainfall near New York City. So that's going to be ongoing for the next 24 to 48 hours. Once we go into tomorrow and as well as into Friday, again, that little area in the Ohio Valley and maybe even to the Southeast will be under the watch there for some flurries and light snow with maybe some minimal accumulation as well. We'll also be watching for a little bit of snow going into late Friday into Saturday in the Northeast, but I'm not expecting anything too heavy. Here's that little clipper system I mentioned a moment ago over in the Midwest as we go into Sunday. We might get a little bit of snow, even in areas like Chicago, you might even see some snowfall going into early Sunday. I don't think we're going to see much accumulation out of this, but maybe a coating to an inch in some areas. So again, if you're looking forward to some very light accumulations, this is the time frame to look at. And then as we go into the first couple of days of January into the new year, we are going to be looking at a high pressure system dominating much of the Ohio Valley back into the Southern Plains. This will keep things a little bit quiet for the first couple of days of January, but I don't think that's going to last very long. As we go closer to Wednesday and Thursday of next week, we will be looking at more storms to start to develop. We might even get a clipper system back up in Canada, might impact areas like the Northeast. We'll also probably see multiple storms across areas along the southern tier of the United States more than anything. And these will have a chance to produce some showers, even some thunderstorms. We might go back to some severe weather threats as we go into early January, especially down in the Dixie Alley and as well as the Southeast, and maybe even some snow chances in the Southern Plains. But obviously we're still multiple weeks out from this even happening. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you posted if anything like that actually ends up happening. But again, we're still like, 10 to 14 days out, things are definitely going to change between now and then. Here's what we're looking at across the Ohio Valley over the next 24 to 48 hours. Again, there will be snow continuing in Missouri and even southern Illinois as we go throughout tonight into tomorrow morning. We'll be looking at some flurries across Kentucky and as well as Tennessee. It will not be much. We'll be looking at some flurries going into Friday morning in parts of northern Alabama and Georgia. So again, a little bit of a rare sight to see. And then once we go throughout Friday morning into the early afternoon, there will still be a chance for some light flurries, maybe even a as far south as Georgia, Alabama, maybe even a little sliver there of northern South Carolina. Those will be the areas to watch for. And then going later into Friday, there will still be a low chance in parts of like northern Georgia, maybe even South Carolina and the Appalachian Mountains for perhaps a little bit of snowfall. But again, it's getting mostly flurries and a lot of this will not accumulate to the ground. And this is what the HR model is showing right now in terms of snowfall accumulation. Again, I would be really surprised if we even really saw any accumulation in Tennessee, but I wouldn't rule out some flurries, maybe a really light coating on elevated surfaces. That'd be about it. And even this is a bit of a stretch in terms of snowfall accumulation. I don't think we're going to see really much of any across Arkansas or Kentucky or Tennessee, to be honest with you, but a better chance for some snowfall accumulation near St. Louis over the next 24 hours, one to three inches, definitely not out of the question in those areas. And then parts of Illinois might see around a coating to an inch. But again, some of these areas like Northern Illinois, I don't really think are going to see that much in terms of accumulation. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.